morning. My name is Pamela Aurora, and I'm the CEO of Amy. We're here today with Maurizio Rosetto, and we're here at Hymns in Chicago, um, really collaborating with many across the world, um, talking about information technology as well as medical devices. Um, Maurizio is here attending Hymns. He's a very active uh, with the Hymns organization as a collaborator. So what I'm going to do is have Maurizio share a bit about the hospital system that he's working with, the many hats, but where there's been segue is early in his career, and as he's continued with many responsibilities, he works with clinical engineers. And similar to our HTM clinical engineer members, he's been actively leveraging Amy for some time as well. So with that, let's hear from Maurizio relative to his many roles in the association he's been serving. Thank you, Pamela. Yes, uh, uh, actually, I started as a clinical engineer in the early 90s. Uh, after my studies as a biomedical engineer, uh, I started uh, working in Italy as a, really as a clinical engineer. Uh, I should say that in Italy, the story of the Clinical Engineer Association is very old. Uh, 92 was the beginning okay. of the association and with just uh, 10 people. And uh, now, today, we have more or less 2,000 people that are involved uh, in, in the association. So my collaboration with uh, the, the association is a long time. Excellent. And I started at 10 time, but I was working as a clinical engineer for this a group of hospitals, public system in, uh, in my region, which is in the very east part of Italy northeast part of Italy, close to Venice, just to give you a rough idea. And um, so my, my first job was dealing with medical devices, uh, the whole uh, process of uh, beginning from purchasing to installation to maintenance uh, uh, of uh, all uh, our medical devices. And it was an interesting job, uh, and it was a new job, uh, and... Um, it, it, it gives me the opportunity to grow and to have a very nice experience. And at that period, uh, I was uh, also uh, searching for uh, uh, information uh, uh, to educate myself uh, in this field. Uh, and I discovered at that time, Amy, yes. with the publications, uh, and I was always searching for material uh, to mm -hmm. understand the better way. So uh, since... Uh, my experience was, uh, by student, uh, was uh, also abroad. I had the opportunity to... to uh, and uh, I read uh, more or less every month uh, uh, your publication, for example, <laughs> Biomedical Instrumentation, which help, helps me a lot uh, to document myself. Well, your background, though, is much more vast now than just clinical engineering. Yeah. And because of that, you see many opportunities. And I'd love for folks to understand yeah. the other areas and some of the opportunities you're seeing. Yes, because uh, after that, uh, that period, uh, I understood that uh, I, I had to, to deal also with informatics and in networks and uh, infrastructures. Um, it was important because the medical devices, they changed. Uh, uh, going from uh, isolated uh, devices uh, to networked devices. Correct. And that uh, was starting in the 90s, early 90s, the period where, when I started. So it starts to be necessary to connect uh, the devices. It was the beginning. Uh, um, uh, we, we had to deal with HL7, uh, with uh, um, uh, all the images and so on and so on. And so uh, slowly, uh, I started to, to become uh, also the CIO of my hospital. It's a bit strange, but um, I, I did it. I did it. I, and I started uh, to understand that there was a need of the convergence uh, uh, between clinical engineering and, and, uh, and uh, information technology because, and also uh, um, networking. So there was important to have a convergence to understand how to deal with all this uh, this stuff. And so uh, in in the 2000, uh, I was uh, the responsible also of uh, uh, the C it was the CIO uh, actually, and uh, I was dealing with both. 
Well, to, this morning we saw um, a panel that was fabulous on artificial intelligence. And it's clear that there's so much data on medical devices that really doesn't flow into these big analytical data lakes. Yeah. And um, your comment about this need for interconnectivity is really spot on relative to the trends of where it's going and the big opportunities to be had with the mining of that data for basic analytics, but also um, eventually for machine learning and artificial intelligence. It's quite good. Yes, because this great opportunity to connect machines gives you a a big opportunity to have a new uh, new performances, new possibilities. But of course, uh, arises a new problem. You have there, there are risks, uh, and you mm -hmm. understand slowly that you have to manage uh, these risks. And uh, so I started to um, have interest uh, on how to protect the machines, how to protect the connections. Uh, and so safety, security became a word very important for me. And uh, since in my staff, I had uh, IT people and uh, cleaning engineering people, trying to let them work together was uh, very challenging uh, because different, a bit different cultures, but uh, still the need to let them work together. Absolutely. And, and the cybersecurity is paramount. It, the more networked, the more challenging it is as far as keeping those devices safe. But uh, this uh, brings me also to the collaboration in the clinical uh, association, uh, the Association of Clinical Engineers in Italy, because I started also to uh, promote uh, education inside the association during our meetings, during uh, our conferences, uh, uh, putting some panels and discussing about uh, interoperability standards and uh, uh, about uh, the necessity of speaking uh, on, on IT. And uh, for us, it's important to have uh, uh, also to compare what we are doing in Italy uh, with the other countries, because as far as I know, I have connections uh, uh, and uh, I know that the problems are the same, right. even if maybe the rules uh, uh, are not the same. Regulatory might Regulatory be slightly different. Slightly You're right. Different. You have here in the US uh, FDA. We have regulatory different regulatories, but on the basic, there are the same problems. Absolutely. And we have also to solve the same problems. We have to to uh, to study and to find the right way to manage this this kind of problems. From the standpoint of the regulatory, very important, but there's so much we can learn from each other. You had mentioned to me this morning that there was aspects to the Amy standards that had helped you. Um, you'd also talked about um, different education sessions that have this universal um, relevance, whether you're in Italy or the US. And I do think there's a lot of opportunities for sharing between Amy and the Association um, of Clinical Engineers in Italy. Yes, of course. We uh, we are in the same situation. We uh, have to deal with all these devices that are connected. Uh, when we when we buy a new device, we have to connect the device, and so our, the problems are starting to arise. So we have to understand safety checks, security checks, uh, to establish the right way to manage the device during the cycle life of the cycle life. And of course, we have privacy problem now. Mm -hmm. uh, and with GDPR, uh, we had to uh, understand how to manage the uh, privacy risks for medical devices, which is something peculiar uh, if you look at the general problem of privacy. And what what I can see is that the same thing is going on on cybersecurity. Yes. There is a general cybersecurity approach, uh, but there is a particular uh, cybersecurity approach of medical devices, and uh, and this this was something that I saw in particular courses organized from uh, Emmy uh, that inspired me. And at the moment, for example, I'm trying to organize. Uh, such a kind of course also in Italy, speaking about cybersecurity for uh, engineers, clinical engineers. The, so we have, uh, what I like to say is that for a clinical engineer, if 
a, a device is attacked, is, it, it means it, there is a risk for the patient. But maybe you cannot use the device to save the life of the patient. So it's a bit different than losing a business, a process. Uh, it, there is, for us as clinical engineer, there is the life of the patient, the health of the patient in the center. And if a device is attacked, that means is risk the life of the patient. We work on this approach and we want to understand how go how, how deal with the cybersecurity problem, having the clear idea of our mission, uh, using in the right way medical devices for saving life of the patient. Or Absolutely. It's universal as far as that need. There was another universal problem that created opportunities. And within the U.S., we had different methods of doing things. I think our, um, our stakeholders would learn a bit from how Italy's handling the aspects of COVID. And the challenge was certain, but relative to the opportunities, how is Europe handling it and how does Italy fit into that? Yes, in Italy, the European, we are, of course, in Europe, and the European Commission um, placed a, a big project of uh, uh, a recovery and resilience uh, plan, a so called recovery and resilience plan. Uh, the government, the Italian government, applied for this project and received a lot of uh, uh, investments. Uh, um, for the, the it, Italy. Special investments are for the healthcare and going from building uh, new infrastructure, new facilities, uh, um, especially uh, considering the experience of uh, uh, the pandemic situation, especially in uh, um, uh, helping people at home uh, with telemedicine, uh, with telehealth, uh, or to uh, deal with intermediate uh, uh, patient recovery. Um, so building, but not only building, uh, IT, uh, as I said, telemedicine, new PACS systems. And uh, uh, so there is a big job to do. Uh, we have a very strict uh, timeline, schedule, and, uh, and, and there is a... A central level uh, controlling, uh, there is a regional level, and there is also um, a local level. And for example, in uh, where I work every day, I have the responsibility to manage uh, all the projects where we are involved locally. Ah, very good. Well, it's a big job. And I'm certain that the Italian Association of Clinical Engineers appreciates your leadership. Amy appreciates your collaboration with our organization. And we look forward to many more years. I hope. And I'm looking forward for the same. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you, Maurizio. Thank you.